Last week we uh, spoke in uh, 1 Thessalonians about um, the first part of His coming to be there for us. And we'll be back in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 next week. But just know this, our God is God. He is sovereign over all. He has been very intimate with us in our past. He is very ever-present in our today, in our lives right now, and He holds the future in His very capable hands. People do not want to accept the things of the Lord today. People uh, make fun of the wisdom of God's truth today. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that they will look at it and they will call it foolishness. But we have the Holy Spirit. We're on the other side of salvation. If you have come to a place in time in your life that you know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, if He has blessed you with His Spirit within you, then your life is different. You are a new creation. Old ways, old thinking, old concepts, old wisdom, old knowledge, it passes away. And God just, uh, He pulls back the veil and He lets us see uh, behind the curtain of all the mysteries of life. And I, I, I've talked with many people, uh, Pastor Sam, I know you have as well, and, and, and they just don't understand anything. They, they just have totally bought into the wisdom of the world. But after they came to know Christ, everything changed for them. And they come back and it's like, wow, it just makes so much sense. It's because we're listening to truth. Because God can take the truth of Christ and He can bring us the true sense and make all the rest look like nonsense. And they can laugh at us if they want to. I know how the end ends. Let me, matter of fact, let me uh, share with you a, a, a verse of Scripture. It's in 2 Corinthians <clears throat> I read it, I looked at it, and I said, do I want to read this? But this is what the truth of God's Word says. 2 Corinthians 3.15 says, But even to this day when Moses is read, he's speaking to them as they read the Old Testament, he says, a veil, the veil is on their heart. It's there to cover. They just don't see. The next verse says, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's freedom. There's confidence. Did you hear me, church? Confidence. Confidence that the will of God, the ways of God, are exactly what we need. If you have your Bible, and if you are in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, would you stand with us and Honor of reading God's Word. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse number 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. That means right now, folks. We, we see it as a mystery, but there is, a, there is an entire construction of lawlessness that is being built in our world today. Only he that is God <clears throat> who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one 
will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume, I love this, with the breath of his mouth, destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders. Only the powers of Satan, the lying of Satan, he's the father of lies, all the signs <clears throat> of Satan, with all unrighteous deception, <clears throat> he comes to deceive. He always speaks lies. He always tries to tear apart. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's who he is. That's what he does. Know that. Admit that. Accept that. But don't fall for it. <clears throat> With all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. The second coming of God. We're going to unveil some things to you today that God's already spoken. Amen. It's truth. And it's for us. Now, the second thing is, is God wanted us to know it. He spoke it for us. So He doesn't want it to be hidden. He wants you to be aware. Like He said to the, uh, Paul through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we talked about it last week, in 1 Thessalonians 4, He said, I do not want you to be ignorant of these things. That means unaware or unknowing. We need to know that God has a plan. And you may think that God is not working. He's working. You may think that God's late. He's on time. And God has a plan for your today. And God will beautifully make that plan come about. Now, there was a large group of people who had thought that somehow that if they had died, they had missed the second coming of God. So he, he, he talked to them about that in, in 1 Thessalonians 4, that that, that day, if, for those that have passed away already, God's got them. When they let, said goodbye to this world, they said hello to Jesus. But when he comes back, he'll come back with their spirit, and that's when the bodies will come out of the grave. If you're alive, you will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, and you'll receive your new body one that is fit to last throughout eternity. We were born in corruption, we'll be raised in incorruption. We were born with a mortal body, we will be raised with an immortal body. But he says, I don't want you to be unaware because Satan is the master of delusion. He is the father of lies. John 8, 44 said, said that when he lies, he speaks his native tongue. He doesn't know how to do anything but lie to deceive, to hurt you. He doesn't just lie for the sake of lying. Satan has a purpose behind it. He wants you to be uh, unaware. He wants you to be satisfied. He wants you to say that, that you don't need to do anything now. You can just sit back and let anybody else do things. Well, I just want you to know that God is telling us today in this scripture that he's coming he doesn't want us to be ignorant and he gives us three things to tell us that he has not come yet one is already set in place one has not been set in place but is coming and the other could be set in place we'll talk about that let me talk to you first of all <clears throat> about the one that is already set in place i believe Look what it says in verse 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Falling away. It was here, but it has fallen away. It's no longer there. This is the word apostasy. It means to abandon, to renunciate, means to not follow any longer, to not obey anymore. For today, I'm not talking about the apostasy, apostasy that's committed by, by Christians where they have backslidden. There's always a group of people that want to look at another group of people and, and judge them and, and say, they, 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 they're in apostasy. 
I would dare say that just about all of us have backslidden. No, no, no. All of us have backslidden. We have idols that we allow into our life. Now, let me remind you of my, it's not actually my definition. This is Adrian Rogers' definition of what is an idol. Anything that you love more, anything that you fear more, anything that you serve more, or anything that you value more than God. If you love it more than God, now hold on. You would say, oh no, I don't love anything more than God. Well, just look at your life. Where is your love going? Where is your love being applied? Where is your fear? Are you you fearful of the things of this world? Do you fear obedience? Are you serving? Where is your serving? What do you value? Let me see how you value. Let me see your checkbook. Let me see your time. Let me see how you value this word. let Let me know how you value your neighbor. Let me know how you value that person that that treats you badly. You've received grace. Do you give grace? We all have idols. And usually that idol, no matter where it's going, is facing us. We We want the idol to be about us. We've all got them. That's not what I'm talking about today. This apostasy is something that is different. It is a way of walking away from truth that the world has picked up on. When I was a kid, the Ten Commandments were everywhere. Now they're they're, they're no longer called the Ten Commandments. They're called the Ten Suggestions. And we don't value them. As a matter of fact, It's almost to the place, now I want you to think about what I'm about to tell you. When you hear Ten Commandments, people use it as a word or as a catchphrase that we're narrow-minded, that we're judgmental, that we're looking down on people, that we don't understand, and they look at us as being inferior simply because we would even say the term Ten Commandments. How did we get there? That marriage, the first thing, the first institution that God had after creation was the family. Now we're going to totally, we can't even define marriage. Who should be in a godly marriage? And listen, that has almost become accepted in that when you think about marriage, you're even scared to say, that a marriage is between a man and a woman, a woman and a man, because you're afraid of what the world will say because they now accept marriage is anything. There is certain things that the world, we have fallen away from. Truths that we've renounced. Things that we just look at and say, I I, I no longer hold those things. I I, I have forsaken those things. This word apostasy is a verb. It means it can be defined by the action that it takes. Let me tell you what Jesus said about this. Y'all like Jesus? Did he speak truth? I mean, when he spoke something, it was for our benefit, right? Well, in Matthew chapter 24... Let me tell you what Jesus said about this. Verse number 10. Then many will be offended and betray one another, will hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many because lawlessness will abound. Come on now. The love of many will grow cold. And this, but it says, but he who endures to the end will be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to the nations. Then the end will come. He says, first, there's going to be a falling away. Timothy talks about this in 1 Timothy in chapter number 4. He said, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. 
Has anybody walked away from the church? Their name may still be on the roll, we just can't find them. And any reason will keep them from being loyal to God's church. I mean, they can find a way to get to Walmart, but they can't find a way Amen, to be about God's business. I mean, Mark talked about a prayer ministry. I asked them to, we need, we need a prayer ministry because prayer is the fuel for the engine. Amen. But if I called a special prayer meeting for Tuesday night at 10 o'clock at night, Could we come, can we come up with a reason not to come? There's a falling away. Amen. He said, they will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons. Man alive, that's the world today. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. I see that. These people that are speaking these un known lies today that they, they think that's truth they don't have a conscience anymore they're not listening to the holy spirit of god forbidding to marry commanding to abstain from foods which god created to be received with thanksgiving by those who have believed and know for the truth that was first timothy second timothy Chapter 3 says, But know this, that in the last day perilous times will come. For be, men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, this word is so descriptive. They will be brutal and despisers of good, traitors, headstrong. Maybe you know some of these people. Haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They've got a form of godliness, but they deny its power. Christianity light. I know God, I just don't have any of the evidence of it in my life. From such people, what does he say? Turn away. Don't follow them. Don't listen to them. 2 Timothy chapter 4. He's not done. Verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom. He says to us, I take this serious, I hope you do too, preach the Word. Be ready. In season, out of season. We are to be people who convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires. Because they have itching ears, they heap up for themselves teachers. Oh, they say, we need more, greater learning. I mean, it's not about the learning. It's about the application. If we look at the Word of God today, and we study the Word of God today, and, and, and we preach the Word of God today, what good does it do if it's not heard, received, and lived? If we don't take the application of the Word of God to our life, what's the point? We're not building up this reservoir of truth in our mind, this encyclopedia of facts about God. We're supposed to walk with God. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Does that sound like what's happening? We've turned away so quickly. This past week, we observed 22 years since 9-11-2001. Y'all remember that day? It's just us. Can we talk? Y'all remember where you were? 
when you heard. I do too. I was in the doctor's office. They were drawing blood for something that I would later live. But you know, the greatest tragedy is what I saw on TV. I couldn't believe it. I called my wife. And I was so proud of our president when he stood on that heap and said, you want to be heard? We heard you. And there was a rallying in our country. We laid politics aside. And the churches were full. And there was, there was something down deep in our heart that we said, we've gotten away from. That's been 22 years. Where is it today? How woke has our country become so quickly? Who are the ones that are speaking truth? Who are the ones that are seeking to divide? Who are the ones who would rather walk away than, than to have a conversation with somebody else and work together? How arrogant we've become as a people. How seared our heart has been for those things that are what our founding fathers said were self-evident. But no longer do we think of them as being self-evident. I'm telling you that we walked into apostasy. I see it around us. We rail against it, but what is happening, it is, it is creeping into every little crevice of our life. Jesus says that will come first. It is the setting of the stage for something that will happen after that. And that's the second thing. Look what it says in verse 3. For the day of the Lord will come, uh, will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Y'all look up here. You may have heard this word. This is the Antichrist. You ever heard of the Trinity? God the Father. Amen? Jesus the Son. And the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all know Satan's a copycat? So he has something that's opposite of God the Father. That's Satan. He wants to be like God. And he has something that wants to be the opposite of Christ because Christ comes to, to reveal truth and to bestow the kingdom of his Father where the Antichrist, the opposite of Christ, comes to worship his Father and to build a kingdom in allegiance to his Father, Satan. There is the, the Holy Spirit and there is the opposite who will come as the, 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 the helper of the Antichrist called the false prophet. But you see, this is the one I said, he may be here, he may not be here. He just hasn't yet been revealed. When the rapture of the church comes, we talked about it, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when Jesus descends in the clouds with the, the, the voice of God, with the, with the uh, angel, the archangel, when, we, when the trumpet is blown, he'll come with a shout, he'll come with a voice, he'll come with a trumpet. And when he does, the dead in Christ will rise. If we're alive at that time when it happens, we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We'll meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That will begin. Now, folks, I don't have all the time to talk about it today, or I'd be in one of those two-hour, three-hour sermons. But that will begin a time on earth called the tribulation. The first three and a half years will be the revealing of the Antichrist and the Antichrist taking up his power in his kingdom. He will become a one-world ruler over the whole world. He will become the religious figure. He will become the political figure. And he will become the head of the economy of all the world. 
And at the midpoint of that, it moves into the last three and a half years. It's called the Great Tribulation. And really what will happen in the first three and a half years, he will build a treaty with Israel, the rebuilding of the temple. If you know where that is, that is where the Dome of the Rock is today. That will be the Muslims. For him to rebuild that temple, it will cause a stir. There will be a war. The Antichrist will win that part of the war to the place that nobody will want to fight against him again. And here's the point. At that point, he will go to the temple and sit on the throne. This is talked about in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus even mentioned in himself the abomination of desolation. That he sets himself up as God. It's what he's always wanted. And he's the prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2.2. 2. But he wants to take that to the next level. He literally thinks that he is God. And he is coming with his Christ. Yes. Now, there's something that's keeping that happening today. Even though he might be alive, he, he may not be born yet. I don't know the time of it. You don't know the time of it. But I do believe, and I, I said this last week, in the imminent return. Did you hear me say that last week? What is the word imminent? I mean, it can happen right now. Right? You may hear that voice. You may hear the trumpet. No, I hope you hear the voice, and I hope you hear the trumpet. Because when he does, I'm going to lay this coat down. It's not fit for glory. Amen? I'm going to throw this insulin pump away because I won't need it anymore. I'll get rid of the hearing aid and the glasses and that ornery streak. <laughs> and I will be with Christ forevermore. Amen? Amen. That could happen right now. Now, if, it, if this is, let's just give a, if it is going if it, if it was going to happen in the next 10 minutes, for the Antichrist to take over in his power in that first three and a half years, he'd already had, have to be alive. Uh, by the way, don't go around trying to name him. People have been trying to name the Antichrist. It was Hitler. It was Stalin. It was Nero back in that day. My brother, the preacher, who's now in heaven, he thought it was going to be Jimmy Carter. <laughs> you remember when Jimmy Carter was always coming in peace, you know, and he was going to get peace between Israel and Egypt and all that? My brother was convinced it was Jimmy Carter. Jimmy, if you hear this tape, I'm sorry. Listen. God's already seen it. God's already going to allow it. But you need to know one more thing. He's restraining it. Look what it says. 2 Thessalonians. Look in verse number 6. You know what is restraining. That he may be revealed in his own time. You know, Jesus talked about my time has not yet come. But then at the end, he said, my time has come. And he went to the cross. He knew when it was coming. We all have a time. There is a thing on the internet that if you look it up right now, it'll tell you the day you're going to die. Have y'all seen that? According to it, I got a little time left in me. Uh, anybody can put anything on the internet. That doesn't mean it's true, right? But the Lord knew the day of my birth, and he knew who I was before I was even formed in my mom and dad's womb. And he knows the day of my death. And my name has already been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, so he's already prepared a place for me. And if he has gone to prepare a place for me, he will come again and receive me unto himself that where he is there, I will be also. Y'all good with that? Heaven's home. I'm just a pilgrim traveling through, right? But he said there's some things that are happening, and I just want you to know it's not out of control. I'm restraining. Everything that happens in our life has to go through the almighty hands of God. 
And there's some things that God's going to look at and he's going to say, you're not going to like it, but it will be for your ultimate benefit. So I'm going to allow it to happen in your life. It will be for my honor and glory and for your benefit. We get to heaven, we talk to Job about it. Some of you think you're rivals with what you've gone through with what Job went through. I haven't. I am the most blessed person in all the world. I have, been, I have a wife that loves me. Praise God, hallelujah, amen. I do not know why. But now she's gotten into this thing where she'll come and she'll hug me and she says, I love you, love you, love you. I don't know why, but she's doing it in triplicate. Maybe it's because the Father loves me, the Son loves me, Jesus loves me. I mean, the Holy Spirit loves me. Maybe she's trying to catch up with him. I, I am so blessed. I am so, it's so undeserved. But I am so grateful, right? He says, I got this. I love you. And all this stuff that you think is terrible, he still I got it. I'm, I'm holding it back. But there's coming a day when he's going to say, I'm going to turn Satan loose. He thinks he's all that. I'm going to let him go. And it's going to be tribulation. Oh my goodness, it's going to be great tribulation. But because I'm saved, I won't be here. I'll be raptured out of this place while all that's going on. Look what he says here. He says, for the mystery of, unlawless, of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. He says, I'm going to call him home. Who is the one that's restraining Satan today? Who is the one that says that there are limits on what Satan can do? There's limits on evil. There's limits on darkness. There's limits on corruption. It is the powerful Holy Spirit of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus spoke it. The power of the Holy Spirit took those words and made it alive. And all of creation was created and held, come on now, and sustained by the mighty hand of God. And that which is holding back, he says to the world, come on, in apostasy, he is saying to the world that is gone after the lies, the untruth, who think they've got it all figured out. Can I just speak to my environmentalists for just a moment? Who are so afraid that man has disturbed this world and that, that the earth is going to be corrupted by all that. Now, folks, I, I understand that when I was in the first grade, I saw a, a video on littering, and it got to my heart, and I, I don't like anybody that litters. Can I get an amen? Because this is the earth that the Lord has given us. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and those who dwell therein, we should take care of this place. Plant trees, plant your beautiful flowers. I mean, it, have fun. It's a good place. But how, I'm going to say this kindly as I can, how preposterous and stupid of us to think that we can overrule the mighty hand of God. He's already, he's already said this place is going to get burned up. But it's going to burn up from within. We, all the people talk about uh, this world began with a big boom. No, but it will end with one. Read 2 Peter chapter 3. It will melt with fervent heat. Now, just hear me for just a second. When I told you about the apostasy, they say they put off all the truth of God's Word and they believed the lie that is out there. Should we take care of things? Oh, honestly, yes. Should we pollute? No. Are we going to override the will of God? No. But I'm here to tell you, there is something that is restraining that when it's taken out of the way, all hell will break loose on earth. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Where, why is He taking it away? Where does the Holy Spirit live? In your heart. In the hearts of the Christians. When the rapture of the church happens, how many of the Christians will be taken? Who goes with us? Now, will people be saved 
In the tribulation? Yes. The Bible says Israel will be saved in a day. They will, that people will be saved. Maybe they'll hear a message and after the rapture of the church, and by the way, we'll talk about this next week, they're going to come up with all the kind of cunning little reasons on all that. They're going to try to explain away the rapture of the church. We'll talk about that next week. But just to understand this, <laughs> he's going to let them walk through it. He'll take us out of it. Revelations 3.10. But he'll make them walk through it. The Holy Spirit will turn them loose. If you fall for the lie, you'll live with the consequences of the lie. First, there's going to be the apost apostasy. Second, the Antichrist will be revealed. Third, the Holy Spirit will be taken away. He wanted us to know this. He wanted us to understand this. The more you see the trappings of this, could our world fall together for our charismatic leader who comes and promises peace? World peace? Could our world come together and say, we're tired of all this economic unheaval all over the world where people are starving? Would it, would it be great to have this charismatic leader who could come and promise us economic blessings? No more fighting over who is, we're supposed to worship? You think that could happen today? Come on, have we, been be, have we been fooled by a charismatic leader before? That's exactly right. So what's going to happen? Why is he telling us this? Why is it that we need to know this? 2 Peter chapter 3, he says, how should our living be? He literally says, because all of these things, how should your living be? Do we hear the truth? Do we receive the truth? And do we change our life according to the truth? Um, I don't know when he's coming. It could be another million years. I doubt it. With all my heart, I doubt it. But I'm here to tell you that the apostasy is here. It's here in America. It's in places that I've seen. And there's a hunger. But we must quit hungering for the things of this world and begin to hunger for the things of God. Where's the church going to be? At the rapture of the church, are we going to be on fire Are we going to be praising? Are we going to be leading the worship? Or are we going to be apathetic? Amen. 